so this is SparkFun Electronics. Uh, this is kind of in the corner of one of our warehouses. If you haven't heard of SparkFun and you haven't heard of Arduino and you're wondering what you're doing here today, uh, SparkFun is nine years old. Uh, we started in 2003. We have about 135 employees at this point and a three to one ratio of dogs to people. Um, so we have about 41 dogs that roam the building. We are self-funded. And most folks don't realize that we are a truly global company. As soon as you turn on a website in this day and age, you are global. So 50% of our revenue comes from domestic sources. 50% of our revenue comes from international sources. So this begs the question, oh, how do we deal with cultures and how do we collaborate on a global scale? And uh, if you couldn't tell, um, I didn't take a class in college. So this was literally the book I bought in 2002 in order to start SparkFun. So I am making this up as we go along. So this is the SparkFun website. And it's everything that you would expect uh, Amazon would do, right? You add it to your cart, you read the description, it has photos, and you check out. But the difference with SparkFun is that we actually share some stuff on the product page. So we show folks, not only is there this product, but here's the source files so you can go and modify these files. Now the important part about that is we're actually enabling folks to remix these designs. So they can co um, combine two different designs and come up with their own product. And uh, Robert Cook has already used this photo. This is fantastic. We, we actually show folks not only you know, our products, but we show folks how to build products. So we're sharing and trying to create more businesses out there. We're, we're uh, encouraging folks to do that. And once we convince them to do that, we show them that, uh, you, let's say they come up with a product and they, they want to come out with their own uh, business. They think that you need one of these machines to build electronics. And at SparkFun, we, tr we show them, we teach them that, no, you don't need this gigantic machine. You don't need an entire assembly line. You need a box with a toothbrush and a spatula, some Q-tips, and some components. Right? You can do this on your uh, uh, table at home in your kitchen. And oddly enough, I found this fantastic picture on Flickr. Um, I wouldn't recommend this. Don't, absolutely don't do this. But if you don't know, this is a reflow skillet. Right? This is how SparkFun started, is we made electronics on a skillet. This gentleman was also making pancakes, but wouldn't recommend it, but it's kind of fun. So you can now make your idea at home. Okay, now where do we go from here? You come up with the idea and you're like, great. In this day and age, how easy is it to put together an e-commerce website and start selling stuff? Shopify, right? You can throw something together, put a buy now button next to it and start collecting money in what, 15, 20 minutes? Great, you've got your product, you can get it on the web. And by the way, Kickstarter, um, I haven't updated this, but Makey Makey is going really well. We're gonna talk about Kickstarter more later, but it's also another way to get your product out there. <laughs> So you built it, you've got it on the web. Do you really need a warehouse? This is one aisle of the SparkFun warehouse and some folks walking around. This is gigantic. This has taken us nine years to get to this point, but we didn't start here, right? This was my bedroom. I was shipping stuff out of my bedroom in 2003. You too can do this. You can sign up with... <laughs> the, the, when you order something from Amazon and you get a little brown box on your doorstep, right? Well, guess what? When you order from SparkFun out of a bedroom, you got a little brown box on your doorstep. It doesn't matter whether it comes from a gigantic distribution center or comes from somebody in their bedroom. You can sell stuff on the internet, right? So we show our customers these things. We say, hey, look, remix our product, come out with your own thing, and start selling it. And over time, we've seen that there are three sort of buckets that our customers who we've enabled to do this fall into. And the first one is pretty simple. It's uh, they sell a few. And they, they have to keep their day job because it's just, you know, five or 10, maybe 20 items. It's, it's pretty unique. There's six people. I guarantee you there's six people in the world that want to buy your product, <laughs> right? It's the internet. There's tons of people out there. You will sell it if it's available for sale, okay? So you sell some stuff. And I've talked to plenty of people who are so excited that they were able, they sold enough, they made enough money to buy a new tool, right? It's all about, can I, can I just make enough money? It's not, I don't need to quit my day job. It's, can I continue doing the things that I love? The, the second bucket is on the other end of the spectrum, right? If, if, you, sell, if you sell Pebble, right, you're, you're off the charts. That's 67,000 units. You're not making that in your bedroom. That's where you jump on a plane and fly somewhere and talk to some folks that actually know how to produce some stuff. Okay, where, uh, and this is the rare mi uh, minority, right? Where we find most folks is what we call the pit of despair. <laughs> This is where folks have created something where they've said, you know, hey, I, I got this idea, I want to sell it, and they think that they're going to sell five or ten, and suddenly they've got a Kickstarter that's funded to ten or fifteen thousand dollars, and they go, oh shoot, 
how, how do I build this? And this person says it best. This is a fantastic open source tool uh, that, that had a Kickstarter. And on their updates page, they said, this is what you'll get. It took us about six minutes to test and calibrate, screw and kit this. We just have 150 to go. That's 15 more hours. Right? It doesn't sound like a lot if this is your day job, if this is what you want to be doing, but this is something that they created on the side and said, hey, I just want to kind of do this. I didn't sign up for 15 hours of kidding. So this is the problem. This is where we're at today. These, this is why people think that they can talk to SparkFun. And we like to fill that little gap. Right? This is the pit of despair. We're trying to fix this. SparkFun isn't doing it well. We're not doing it the best, but I believe that we're currently the only option out there. And that's not a good place to be. We can talk about some of the successful collaborations. Right? This was a three-way collaboration between Arduino, uh, Shigeru Kobayashi, a professor in Japan, and SparkFun. He had a great idea, and we helped him build it. This is uh, Yori of DIY Drones, fantastic math built into a microprocessor, and uh, lots of sensors. Of course, Leah Beakley and the embedded e-textiles Arduino Lilypad, uh, the Arduino Pro Mini, and then the iBot board between Brian Schmaltz and uh, Evil Mad Scientist Laboratories, so we can control stepper motors and draw creative things on eggs. And then uh, Dan Julio, who uh, figured out the heart rate uh, strap, the, the Nordic heart rate straps. You can actually uh, receive uh, heartbeats from uh, wearable electronics. So these were products that we worked with folks in order to manufacture them through a collaboration. We didn't have a specialty here, but we worked with them to make it happen. These were some of the successful ones. Collaborations don't always work out. Some folks have an idea. Collect underpants. <laughs> Phase two, not really sure, but I'm sure we'll make some profit, Spark Fund. Please, work with me. And we say, you know, that's, that's a great idea, but sometimes we don't exactly get it. You know, we, uh, we get uh, tons and tons of ideas that cross our desk every day, and some of them are very good, and maybe we're not smart enough to see how good they are. But we have to say no to far more than what we say yes to. So this day and age, I'm hoping that um, we can fix this. So I think you, the audience, um, talking to folks in, in passing, there's a tough nut to crack. And part of that is funding. So um, there's lots of venture capital. Uh, Kickstarter is an interesting way to do it. I think Kickstarter is about to fold upon itself from the weight of popularity. They don't quite know what to do with hardware, especially with the Pebble. Uh, 10, 10 million dollars is kind of spectacular for a single project. Um, so I don't know that Kickstarter is the answer. I would hope to see that there's some other way that you can actually get uh, investment in a company. Uh, Kickstarter, right, it's just sort of this donation thing. You don't actually get investment in that company. I think there's other models out there, including this is a graphic from the um, Open Source Hardware Bank, an idea that was floated three or four years ago by a gentleman named Matthew Stack. It was a little crazy, but I, I think he's got something there. I think there's other ways of funding. The marketplace. We need a way that makers can say, you know what, here's this thing, I want to sell it, and let the market decide whether this is a good idea or not. I don't like the fact that SparkFun can say no. I want to be able to say yes to everything and just see how it goes. I don't think SparkFun is going to crack this, right? This is not our business. This is not where we operate. I think this is going to be a peer-to-peer -peer website that somebody or a group of people cracks. We can't do it. I'm hoping that somebody here can. Community help, right? We need to work together and create better things. The next one is a big one, designed for unorthodox manufacturing. So uh, Todd Kurt, you were mentioning it with your 3D model. The difference between 3D printing and injection molding is huge, right? You got to know about draft angles. You got to know about how this thing is going to be ejected from the mold. We didn't learn that until we built a couple things the wrong way. But now that we have that knowledge, how do we share that with the community? We know how to design things in order to be built at SparkFun, which is really unorthodox, right? We do things really wacky at SparkFun. We don't build things 10,000 at a time. So hopefully we can share some of that information. But as a community, we're going to need to work together to figure out and help people design these things so that they can be built um, on a much smaller high mix scale. The interesting one, I think, that's coming online even today is there's a lot of Throughput. There's a lot of production that's coming online with every 3D printer that's sold. There's a statistics out there uh, with um, power drills. There's 80 million power drills currently in North America. Do you know the average 
use of a power drill over its entire lifetime. It's 15 minutes. <laughs> you have a power drill sitting on your shelf. It will be used 15 minutes. That's it. How much more use can we get out of that power drill? Now, multiply that across all of the 3D printers in this world. I'm pretty sure they're not running right now. Right? There is some throughput there that we can put to use. Um, all of the hacker spaces coming online. I believe there's a way that we can say, hey, I need this thing built. I need this thing kitted. Would you please help me? We need some sort of peer-to-peer -peer network that allows us to sort of help sign folks up because they got some free time, they've got the skills. And we actually saw this. We had a uh, soldering competition uh, in Boulder, Colorado, right? We just kind of said, hey, we're going to do this thing. Uh, 50 competitors showed up. They even brought their own Metcals. These guys, we, we thought we were going to get some like amateurs showing off how fast they could solder. The pros showed up. <laughs> These guys were fast and they were serious, and it just goes to show, even in a small community like Boulder, Colorado, or Longmont, Colorado, there are folks that are ready to assemble stuff, right? They've got the skills, and imagine if they had the ability to sell sort of their, their services. These are experts in the field working at a, at a company that they don't want to work at. If we can kind of hook them up with the greater crowd, I think we can do some really interesting crowdsource um, assembly. So um, that's what I've got today. If, Please come talk to me about uh, how to crack this nut. Thank you.